one more moment. <laughs> um, I will probably not be able to put my picture on view, but that's okay because you're watching at the presentation anyways. So I'll just switch on my uh, video afterwards. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks everyone for staying this long. It's uh, after all Friday and all, but I would like to talk to you about visualizing uh, the unseen as I call it about from actually from the world of game design this time because um, I'm not from the physics side uh, but quantum physics has become quite important part of my own research in uh, in the side of game design and how to make playful visuals in communicating quantum science and um, it's really interesting to notice how much we have talked especially now in the afternoon about the outreach and how do you talk talk about quantum physics to people who are maybe not from inside the science um, community and um, so uh, as an artist and game designer i believe that playfulness is the concept that pulls people towards both information and challenge and immersing in experiences that are visual emotional and challenging for the reasons uh, can enhance or initiate science communication for that reason yeah so um so as this is to topic of my thesis um i'm just going to give a, a very brief introduction into my background um because in this multidisciplinary direction that i am uh, looking into in my thesis i think it's important to also know um, what has led me into towards quantum uh, technology uh, then something about my research the current status of it um, my thesis is not ready yet but i have something to show um, then about the practices uh, that I am, um, I have been keeping like in the front line uh, have a lot to do with the outreach and modern 21st century skills. And then about the future ideas uh, very briefly. Um, so yes, uh, introductions to me. You might see these little uh, cat characters, quantum cat characters. These are part of the outreach as, actually as well, uh, designed for uh, the University Quantum Games course um, last year, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So my background is actually originally from engineering and biotechnology and 3D visualization. And uh, from the point of view of science visualization comes my interest for this topic. Um, but um, by the time I had uh, decided that I will go to uh, science visualization game industry actually became extremely popular in Finland and I was sort of sucked into that and uh, just became a game designer and artist in in the game industry but uh, that still developed my direction to the science visualization in the sense that I co-founded my own VR company uh, with a couple other like-minded people in 2016 and kept on working on these um, ideas of how VR can be used uh, for training purposes, for example. So again, going a little bit into the educational direction, uh, but it's not exactly that simple in VR. That's a topic of its own, not for today, but it was an extremely interesting tool for the future work with quantum, um, quantum physics visualization as well. So um, after that, um, about four years ago, I was recruited to Aldo University to design a quantum technology exhibition together with uh, extremely high skilled and prestigious group, pre prestigious group of uh, designers, researchers in both quantum physics and game design. And that is the starting point for my thesis in that sense, because um, uh, I went into uh, st studying my master's from there and wanted to develop further this how do we talk about quantum physics and how can we um, engage people who have um, have an interest but have a difficulty in getting closer to this, to this topic like uh, it was very uh, like uh, point and Lily said earlier that people easily also get like just they get scared of the term quantum if they are not quantum scientists themselves uh, yeah th these are just some kind of things that so when it doesn't 
include quantum science. These kind of things are the things that I do. So science visualization, games uh, in different engines, and just uh, how to communicate different kind of things um, through visual arts. Uh, there's also on the final pictures, you can see some biomaterial development that I do and biomaterial art um, with these like um, robotics and biomaterials. And um, because of this, uh, this is also part of, of my thesis in the sense that um, there will be more about museums and how do we uh, put games and information into spaces that are public and reachable and what kind of things, what kind of performances and what kind of art can we put in that kind of um, environments. So um, even though I have a background of studies and research from uh, for a quite, quite a long time from elsewhere than all the university, um, uh, for me, this thesis writing started with the quantum explorations exhibition in Aalto University. So this exhibition was curated by some of the leading quantum physics and games researchers in Finland, and it it is its collection showcased some of the coolest, newest innovations from quantum technology companies. Um, we, for example, had uh, a blue force cryostat there, which was. Uh, uh, a really interesting piece for a lot of people um, and an interesting easy thing to approach as well when you don't know anything about quantum physics from an audience point of view and uh, they were games developed by leading researchers in the field of quantum games as well mm, the preparation for this exhibition took six months um, i collected information from the artifacts from the collaborating companies and research groups uh, creating a path of uh, information starting from the history of quantum science and quantum technology roots uh, in here in Finland and in Aalto University, which starts from around the 70s, and all the way to the playful game experiences that have been created in the recent years. Uh, the exhibition was well executed and documented. And uh, as part of the quantum flagship official program, uh, we have visitors coming from uh, all over Europe to see it. Um, and being in the thick of this all served as the ignition to my interest for visualizing these kind of things, like visualizing the unseen better. Um, and what could we develop from what we did here? Because there's a lot of information, especially from, um, from the field of design or with the lens of design. It's actually really interesting to see how can um, natural science, where quantum physics comes from, uh, be combined with this quite different discourse of design, uh, which is my main thing in, in the other university. So uh, I've been introduced to the topic of quantum games before uh, this already in 2015. Uh, we have a very energetic game research and game jams culture in Finland, which has helped a lot. Um, I was in doing these games already in 2011. Um, the first ever quantum game that I made, uh, you can see here little pictures of it, is called Quantum Alice. And uh, that was played on this spherical ceiling of a planetarium theater. Uh, that's why you can see like the lower picture is kind of spherical because it was like on the ceiling. And the game um, uh, is like this journey of Alice falling into the quantum wonderland through a uh, quantum gates. Uh, of the rabbit hole that you can also see over there. I was the game designer and 3D artist for this project, uh, but we also had quantum physicist, programmer and 3D artist, so we were a very multidisciplinary group. So um, at that, this point I was waiting for my results to come when I'm going to get to the master's program in Aldo game making. Uh, so I continued actually working uh, on my research and working at Aalto University before my studies. Um, as a part of Professor Anna Kaisa Kultima's research group, I took the learnings of quantum explorations, this exhibition, and then continued developing them. And here you can see an example, uh, a little um, snipped picture from an online platform of um, where we have these mini games. In this picture, you can see entanglement, um, which are work as a supplement material for online in this browser-based 
interactive um, research paper or well it's not a research paper but it was sort of like an example of how could you make a, um, a professional paper but add something that is very um, touchable and interactable and easy to that helps a little bit on uh, conveying the science information. Mm. And uh, yeah, as I was accepted to the master's program 2020, uh, myself and a fellow quantum game researcher, uh, Laura Piesponen, who was talking just earlier, applied our novel idea of physical outdoors arts installation, portraying a quantum carpet simulation into the competition of installment art in uh, this new Alto campus uh, creation. And um, yeah, we had already, uh, collaborated with Laura before because she was also part of creating quantum explorations but as we won this competition then we had to actually roll our sleeves and start making a physical representation representation of this installment for large audiences and um, by large audiences I, and I mean that um, in the campus area from where the installation will be there will be um, hundreds to even thousands of people walking by there very close distance like being in the perimeter of the art every day so we are going to be up for very interesting times to see how our art will convey uh, ideas and um, this is also something that um, uh, we will probably have to look into of how can we also collect some information of how do people react to this art uh, but yeah quantum was which is the name of this art piece, uh, is not out yet uh, because it is in the making, as you can see some of the pieces there. Um, but yeah, it's not only an art piece of quantum physics, uh, like a information visualization, but it is also an art piece of sustainability, novel biological wood coding research, living architecture and post-human paradigm shift because it will also have living moss and um, other aspects of research included into it so it's a it's a very interesting new kind of art piece and we hope that it will engage people also in this kind of playful visualization idea of quantum physics and engage people who have no connection to quantum physics from before not even for the word quantum uh, yeah, and this is what I'm aiming for with my thesis. So um, uh, a design document for what I call the Unseen Gallery um, for now, uh, because it deals primarily with visualization, visualizing phenomena that are quantum in their nature. This work will draw together all my previous experiences not only in what I have done as a part of practice myself before, but what I have also learned and um, of the possibilities I've had to interact with researchers. So the outcome of my thesis is very practical and usable for those planning on exhibiting quantum physics and technology topics through playful discourse and practice. Uh, and yeah, but as you can see, I'm threading in a territory that crosses many disciplines. And at times, um, it has really made me question thoroughly of which discourse I am coming from and which should I concentrate on. Um, yeah, so, but it is a little bit of both, both natural science and design. Um, this is a quote. Uh, <laughs> but mostly I added this quote I was um, because as I do research I also have to delve into some of the deeper ends that are not exactly from my field and this was from uh, science philosophy and but this quote I kept here uh, and I have kept for myself because um, this idea of visualizing something that is not from your discipline and which is difficult to understand it crosses but, but what you want to still understand as like science and just being interested in the world, it crosses paths with this kind of eudomonistic happiness of understanding the world around you. Um, and semantically, what we are able to talk about, we have the power to also be part of. So sometimes being able to interpret something uh, just in the right amount and in a, a realistic kind of way that still doesn't... Um, render away the science information is important. 
And uh, this becomes increasingly important when we talk about the semantics of things that are by default different from our common concepts of nature, which is uh, a kind of like a thing for a lot of people who don't uh, understand quantum physics. So the theoretical background for my research starts from game design. Uh, there's interesting research about how we understand and react to educational game contents and how some researchers of games have started to talk about the need for uh, transforming, transforming, oh my God, I can't say this word, um, transformational contents, uh, not educative contents. So the kind of like this paradigm change of how we think about uh, educating or, or science games as more concentrating into the potential that games have in empowering learning. And not because games as default are a superior framework, but because they engage our inner motivation for playfulness and have a possibility of changing how we see things. Another thing that comes here as a very important part is that museums and games in museums and galleries um, the modern public spaces of explorations are an interesting frontier for games. Uh, situational interactions are natural to museums, so there's a lot of games and gamified or playful experiences that can give uh, that what they can give to museums and help in building new kinds of collaborative projects. Mm. But um, yeah, so there are problems when it comes to gaming. Uh, not everyone sees themselves as gamers. And, uh, but interestingly, there are much more people who are interested in gamified experiences that allow themselves to be called gamers. So this is also um, a thing why interactive art and science um, installations might come into play or simulations, for example, uh, because it might lower the barrier of how we approach um, something that we want to understand and, and games themselves sometimes also create these barriers by just with their name and with their uh, the ideas that are um, entangled in them. Curiosity is uh, one of the greatest powers still in humans as a species so there's a lot of um, and there's like a lot of interesting research on this front as well. I will have to see how much of it can I put into my thesis but um, and yeah and as the third or the fourth part of my thesis I am I want to take a look at the so-called 21st century skills um, because um, those underline the importance of creativity and problem solving as critical survival methods for the generations to come uh, uh, we, we're living in quite extraordinary times right now and, and so UNESCO for example has put up this list of um, 21st century skills that are important to take into consideration in modern ways of how do we look for uh, ways to teach. Uh, game jams um, and creating gamified contents is one of these so-called 21st century skills. Um, yeah, well, yeah. I, finally, I want to touch um, in my research topic of discourse and what kind of possibilities non-scientists have for discussing such important things as the impact of quantum technology and science for society at large, for example. Um, we live in a time where systems thinking is extremely important for the whole future of ecosystems and we must learn to collaborate across disciplinaries in that sense as well. And this is something that you can do, for example, through uh, creating content uh, such as quantum games. And it's important to take a critical look at how we talk about multidisciplinary information. Mm, yeah, so um, a quick word about these practices that I basically already sort of went through in here. Um, um, yeah, so I, I just made like, this is quite quite quick, quick list and I am hoping to make these much more content in here. But what I have so far, um, mark down as some of the important parts of what I want to put together in my thesis of um, like how to make quantum games or how to make these like visualizations and uh, representations of quantum art and games is uh, how do we make them 
this iterative process, um, multidisciplinary teams, for example, very uh, common for quantum games, jams. Um, inclusivity, um, so this human-centered design paradigm in how do we, how do we make them accessible for large masses, for example, in museums or um, spaces that are open for people. Uh, target topic, um, there's a lot of problems usually um, with topics that are difficult to understand for the general public on scoping it uh, to be small enough and particular enough. Um, then when it comes to, especially with um, gaming, or understanding in general, there should be room for failure. So this hardcore understanding and skill should not be required to understand something, which is a might be a bit of an oxymoron when some topics really have hardcore information in them, but this is a challenge. And then uh, the idea that is it fun, which again comes into maybe educational games um, and these transformational games in that sense that um, uh, Jesse Shell, I think, was one who was saying that designing for all senses keeps restlessness at bay, which is a very um, practical advice. Um, yeah, drafting the manual, um, I want to write something about uh, setting goals for a project of where you want to create this kind of uh, museum experience, uh, being critical about it, um, what should be the content, uh, wireframing things beforehand uh, so that it is actually much easier for uh, groups to start working on this multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary groups and the platform that could be used for this and uh, the narrative path. Uh, yes, I'm going to try to go future very quickly. Uh, this is just a picture of myself being part of Quantum Game Jam. I thought maybe it's interesting to see. In this Game Jam, we, um, for example, used um, uh, quantum computer simulation to um, compose music. Uh, so I made this together arranged music with a quantum, quantum simulation to create this jazz song for our game. And uh, we also um, showcased the game in a meeting in, uh, in Boston in this American Physical Society, um, uh, sort of like evening party, which was an interesting way to also see and uh, get an understanding of how can you communicate through this open um, uh, environment such as that on quantum games. It was a really good experience. Uh, yeah, quick note into the end of possibilities of what kind of directions I think that quantum topics within quantum games and, and playful experiences should go to. Uh, there's really cool new kinds of ways to uh, portray art in general uh, through digital tools. Um, nowadays, for example, there's in these pictures, there's L'Atelier de Lumière in Paris, for example, that showcases a lot of art, uh, fine art. Um, team, team Lab that makes these like really interesting new kinds of experiences, uh, such as the one that they are showing here in Beijing with uh, foam. Um, and then um, I took uh, an example also from what is popular nowadays with uh, new kind of audiences. And this is why I have a picture of Critical Role uh, DNA, D&D game cast here, because there are ways to communicate science through um, new kinds of platforms. And in this, um, these like new kinds of platforms outside classroom should, people should really look into them um, uh, quite uh, without any fears of what might come to them. Um, I think it's a good idea for anyone in their own community to uh, to turn to these creative um, collectives, for example, or uh, maker spaces, and find out ways how could you uh, collaborate to create some kind of content in multidisciplinary groups. Um, yeah, one more I have to mention because there's one more picture: um, game design and theatrical performance combining um, uh, project. Is this Harry Harry, which is now being performed here in Helsinki, for example. But these kind of things uh, have very good outreach possibilities as well for science. Yeah, I went a little bit quickly into the end because I think I'm out of time. But if you have questions, I would love to answer them.
Thank you, Nora, for this wonderful talk. Uh, you beautifully addressed also how to bring this to the broader society, which is really great and opened several additional pathways to that. Um, Oksana has to, uh, was wondering, um, let me go back. Um, Oksana wondered, Nora, what was the thing that attracted you to quantum? When, when did this take place? In which context? Especially mm -hmm. as a, a bioengineer. Ah. Well, I think that visualizing science all has the same kind of like a starting point in a sense that I've been battling already with how to visualize some stuff from <laughs> inside the cells and, and such. So it was just like one step further. Uh, but maybe it was also the challenge that um, uh, perhaps maybe the biggest reason is that quantum physics is quite often um, dubbed as that you can't understand it, which is, um, it's a difficult concept for somebody who, um, because I, I just like don't like this idea, because I think that everything should be, we shouldn't take a, a starting point that it is difficult to understand. It, it might be challenging, but it is still understandable. So this is the reason. <laughs> Good point, and it also connects with what uh, Shaima said earlier, and Laura and Segi making things accessible. Mm, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it has uh, it has just a huge, huge thing impact for how also um, power structures are going to be formed in future. I think that there should be more accessible information for people who are looking forward to finding it. Yes, and about that findability, you, you gave that beautiful overview of the ends with uh, art exhibitions, for example. Can that be found for people? Uh, if there is one connection, a physics student bringing it to the family, is there some <laughs> somewhere? Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I think that it's um, at least according to the research that I've done so far, uh, museums are really looking for ways to also better engage people. And they have a lot of good research done on what kind of uh, things the new uh, audiences are interested in. So I think that there, there are just a lot of good connection points that um, maybe also science outreach um, parties could work with. Great. Shema is asking, where would your design document be available? I think it would be super cool for the quantum community to use. Yeah, yeah, it will be definitely. Um, well, I, as I make my thesis, I'm sure it will be my school's um, uh, list of theses, but I will also try to put it into my website, as you can see over there now on the screen, this uh, www thing. So I'll, I'll put it there as well um, as I get it ready. but. Not just yet. <laughs> and there are already collaboration suggestions like oh, cool. Sana's project acting like photons could be developed into a role playing game. Maybe yeah. Have yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, these, these kind of ideas are exactly what are needed. Uh, there's so much interest for people to find a way that they can somehow interact with this topic. And it is way too common. I think it was just yesterday I was talking with a fellow game designer and trying to talk about my thesis. And she told me like, whoa, I need to get over this thing that you said quantum. Like, I'm, I'm just like, I'm a little bit like now afraid. So, okay, continue. And this is the thing that might be, it's a challenge, but it's not impossible. <laughs> Then the last question by Jonas Teodon is, how many quantum exhibitions are there out there uh, mm. or other places? Are there any traveling shows? Uh, uh, traveling show, that is a good question. I don't actually uh, know about that, but there has been quantum exhibitions. Um, one is going to be um, in Germany in the coming summer, and then um, wait, when was the one before? It was also actually, I think, in Germany, yes, there was uh, uh, IBM and other parties who were collaborating on that as well. So there are uh, exhibitions, and I will also try to put a list of what I have so far found. Um, but a traveling one, I don't actually know. This is a good question. If if anyone knows better, I would love to also hear about it. <laughs> I see some enthusiastic reactions in the chat about eight quantum exhibitions in Italy, one coming up in December in Germany in Karlsruhe. 
that is all great. Yeah. And there has been some continuing discussion in the chat about your talk and about the previous. So please, everyone, continue that on the Discord. Really great to have these uh, lively discussions. Thank you so much again, Nora. Could you conclude it in your own language? And then we go to the last talk by Lea Kopf. You can bring all up. Right. Okay. So, um, uh, Aivan mahtavaa ollut puhua täällä. Kiitos paljon yleisölle. Toivon, että jokainen saa jotain aivan mahtavaa täältä mukaansa itselleen ja haluaa jatkaa yhteistyötä ja ottaa yhteyttä toisiin rohkeasti parempaan päin. Thank you so much, Nora.